Chapter 8 of Our Little English Cousin. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Francis Brown. Our Little English Cousin by Blanche McManus. Chapter 8 Henley Week. Did you ever see anything so lovely? It looks like a garden full of flowers of all colors, exclaimed Edith enthusiastically as she and Adelaide leaned over the railing of Colonel Howard's houseboat and looked up and down the river. I'm sure everyone would agree with her if they could be at the picturesque little village of Henley on Thames during the week, as it is known. That is when the boat races are held there. It is the great open-air society event for the younger people of England, the Great Water Fete, or Picnic. The nicest way to enjoy the boat races is to have a houseboat and live on it during the week, and then one is on the spot all the time. A houseboat is really a small house that is built on a flat boat, so that it can be towed from place to place at its owner's pleasure. There's a big room with perhaps two or more small bedrooms, at the back is a tiny kitchen and a larder or pantry. It's just like a doll's keeping house. Isn't it lovely, Mamma? declared Edith. Well, yes, said Mrs. Howard thoughtfully as she looked in at the tiny larder. It is all very well for Henley, but I believe I do prefer the manor. Colonel Howard's houseboat was pretty and attractive. The jolliest on there ever, Tom declared. And as Tom was an important person on this occasion, his good opinion was valued by his family. Over the roof, which was used for a general open-air sitting room, was a brilliant red and white awning. And around the edge of the roof or deck was a border of a solid mass of flowers, splendid red geraniums and big white daisies, while hanging down from these was a fringe of green vines, all of which looked very pretty with the brass railings around the deck, and the bright woodwork on the boat itself, which was painted white, with green Venetian blinds at the windows. The deck was covered over with rugs, and there were plenty of wicker chairs and cushions. Meals were served sometimes on deck, sometimes in the big room below. All the houseboats here were decorated in some such way, and made a pretty picture, tied up to the shore on one side of the river, a long line of them, their occupants entertained their friends on board, and there was much visiting done from one to another. The course of one mile, along which the races are rowed, is staked off by booms or logs tied together. On either side of this course lay thousands of small boats as tightly packed together as could be, for naturally everyone wants to get as near the racing boats as possible. The ladies were all dressed in the loveliest of dresses, of all colors, pale pinks, blues, and lavenders, as well as white, with sunshades to match. If it happens to be showery weather, dear me, many a pretty hat and dresses spoiled. But this was a dry Henley, with brilliant sunshine, so Edith was right when she said the river looked like a garden of flowers. The men looked very cool and comfortable in their white flannel suits and straw hats. Along both riverbanks were big tents, which were used as clubhouses by the various boat clubs who were rowing in the races, while thousands of spectators lined either side of the river. English people take great interest in all kinds of sports, but they are especially fond of boating, and they cheer the winning crews at Henley with the greatest enthusiasm. This afternoon, the race in which Tom was to row was coming off, and the Howard family was in a great flutter of excitement. The crew of Tom's boat were to take dinner afterward on their houseboat, and if they should prove winners, they would have an especially jolly feast. Friends of the Howards from Oxford had the houseboat next to theirs. Their eldest son was in one of the competing boats for the ladies' plate, and their two little boys, the nine-year-old twins, Edgar and Will, held great discussions with Edith and Adelaide over the merits of the two rival boat crews. The little girl's loyalty to Ed never wavered, while the twins, as they were always called, 
had a great contempt for any boat crew that did not have their brother George in it. The twins were particularly arrogant this afternoon, for the rumor had gained ground that George's boat would prove the best. However, the cry, They have started, put an end to all talk. It was one of the favorite races of the week, and everybody was wild. On they came, the young fellows straining and the oars glittering as they flew in and out of the water. At first, Etten was left behind, but they drew up little by little on their rivals. Side by side, the rival crews kept nearly up to goal, when with a supreme effort, Etten gave a spurt forward and won by half a boat's length. Such cheers went up. The Etonians were heroes for the rest of the day. You may imagine the joy of Tom's family, who were prouder of him than ever. And in the eyes of the little girls, he had grown several inches taller. Don't you think it was very good of the girls, when they went over afterwards to take tea with the twins, that they did not crow over them a bit? End of chapter 8, Henley Week Recording by Francis Brown